Welcome back to Deploying ASAP, Juniper Network's automated support and prevention solution. In this third video, we will focus on best practices and more advanced concepts in ServiceNow, such as auto-submit policies and device analysis. Let's dive right in to creating an on-demand event. This feature is used for opening a JTAC case even when no fault has occurred on the device, but you would still like to create a case and collect basic troubleshooting data automatically. First, select ServiceNow Devices from the menu and hover the mouse over the right-hand side of any column header. Move to the Columns menu item and confirm that all checkboxes have been selected to reveal all ServiceNow configuration parameters. You can see that Maintenance Mode is off for all devices and that they have AI scripts installed. When AI scripts are used to generate the incident, we call that On Box On Demand. AI scripts are not required to create an on-demand incident, though, and ServiceNow can collect the information over a NetConf RPC, in which case we refer to the method as off-box on-demand. The off-box method is much less efficient than having data collected by the on-box AI scripts. You can use the off-box method by selecting the Use ServiceNow to Generate Incident checkbox. You can add or delete email addresses used for notifications from the JTAC case management system, select a follow-up method, priority, synopsis, and description, much as you would when opening a case with customer care or via the web portal. You can also configure the job to run at a later time, such as preparing for a proactive maintenance window. If automatically submit incident was selected, the incident will display a JTAC case number shortly. If you would like to take advantage of using on-box, on-demand incidents, but do not wish to enable the suite of reactive AI script events, you can create a custom event profile with the on-demand event only. Click the Add Event Profile menu, provide a name and optional description, and deselect all events from all five pages. Search for the word Demand and select the on-demand event type. Click Submit and return to the Profiles page. You will see the on-demand only profile showing there is one event included. You can request an RMA from the same submenu. The Ship To address group, which has been assigned, will be pre-populated and you can select an alternative address as needed. Click Select Device Components to view and select the specific chassis hardware, which you suspect may need replacement. Click Submit to finalize the request. When upgrading Junos on a device, or any time you wish to disable the event profile on a device without having to remove AI scripts, you can place the device in maintenance mode. From the same submenu, select a device, and then select the Enable Maintenance Mode menu. You can apply this to the selected devices only or all devices with the drop-down menu in the window. This too can be scheduled to take effect at a later time. Once the job completes, you will see the word ON in bold red text. Disabling maintenance mode is performed with the same method, but selecting disable maintenance mode. We can obtain an export of all ServiceNow managed devices. Select one or more devices and use the Actions menu to locate Export Physical Inventory. The report will be available for download to your workstation. The caching and collection rate for RSI and log files can be modified to improve performance or data integrity. By default, most Junos devices have a default RSI cache time of 5 minutes. High-end SRX is 15 minutes. The ACX 1000, 1100, EX 22, and 3300, and Branch SRX do not collect RSI by default. Though Juniper Networks recommends keeping the default settings as is, they may not meet your requirements and can be modified with the Core File Collections item from the ServiceNow Devices Actions menu. Similarly, 
You can enable BIOS validation checks from the ServiceNow Devices Actions menu under Device Analysis, Configure BIOS Validation. A legal notice will be displayed, click Accept if approved, and you can modify the behavior for selected and newly discovered devices. The recommended collection rate is 30 days, with 15 being the recommended minimum. Some device families may not support BIOS validation. From the same submenu, you can select Configure Product Health Data Collection, or PHDC. This product health check feature allows you to collect a wealth of hourly product health and troubleshooting data for a period of several weeks. There will be some load placed on the device during data collection, so testing should be performed prior to production deployment. The goal of the data collection is to allow customers to more easily work with Juniper Network's consulting teams to review device configuration, optimization, and deployment strategies. Please contact your account team or service manager for additional information. You can add devices to an existing PHDC or create a new one by providing a PHDC name, collection duration, and selecting whether you want to upload the data to Juniper, delete the data after upload, and mask IP addresses. I prefer to uncheck the delete after upload so that I can review the data at a later time. A device can be assigned to only one PHDC at a time and AI Scripts 5.x is required to be installed on the device in the PHDC. Now let's investigate auto submit policies, a major feature in ServiceNow. Auto submit policies allow ServiceNow to open JTAC cases automatically upon receiving an incident without any operator intervention. You can define the events, devices, and repeat intervals for which incidents will be automatically submitted to JTAC. I recommend creating a policy for each hardware and software combination. Expand the Devices menu and locate the Device Management menu. You will then see all space managed devices. Copy the platform and OS version contents for each combination. Let's look at this SRX example. Copy the contents and then select Create Auto Submit Policy. Paste the value in the policy name and remove all spaces and periods. Click Next. Now select the events you wish to be zero touch escalated to JTAC. Additionally, you can define the case creation dampening rate for each event type. I'm selecting all events, but you may wish to limit this to high and critical priority events only. I'm also clicking the Duplicate Incident Dampening setting to the value of Always for all event types. This way, even if the global settings dampening is switched back to None so that all network events can be collected in service now, you will still only receive one JTAC case per event type per device, and you won't be flooded with identical newly created cases of that same type. Click Next. Confirm emails to be notified by the case management system, configure the priority and the core file handling options, enter appended notes for the synopsis and description, then click OK and then click Submit. You will now see your auto submit policy has been created. The reason I create one for each hardware software combination is that you will eventually have a case open with JTAC and find that you will need to upgrade the OS in order to resolve the issue, and you may need to wait for the next maintenance window to perform that upgrade. In the meantime, you may not want additional JTAC cases open for that same event type. Therefore, you can modify the policy, remove that event from the list, and the updated settings apply only to that specific set of devices and Junos OS versions. As a course example, we will modify and remove all the first 50 events from the first event selection page, just so you can see the number of events in the policy will be reduced accordingly. You can also disable the policy or the dampening settings without having to delete the policy altogether. Select the policy and from the Actions menu select Change Status. Clicking Change Status will toggle the setting. The same will be true for the Change Dampening Status menu option. The current settings are reflected in the Auto Submit Policy page. You can search for and disable a specific event as well. 
When incidents appear in ServiceNow and meet the parameters of an auto-submit policy, they will be automatically escalated to JTAC, with a new case created and the JMB uploaded based on the organization JMB filter settings. You can see the status here as being created, with the JTAC case number shown in the corresponding row. You can also view the status of cases by clicking View Tech Support Cases from the menu. From this window, you can select a case, select actions, and upload additional attachments, additional notes, and view the case directly in the case manager. This concludes part three of our video series. Please proceed to the fourth and final video. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.